my brothers and my sisters, here in the United States, we are 16 days away from our midterm election. Midterm elections are the general elections that are held near the midpoint of a president's four-year term of office. On Tuesday, November 8th, is election day. But my brothers and sisters, one stop early voting began this past Thursday, October the 20th. For 17 days, you may cast a ballot at any one stop site in your county. And eligible individuals may register and vote at the same time at the one-stop site. One-stop early voting ends on November the 5th at 3 o'clock p.m. Giving you some information. All right? This upcoming midterm election is very, very, very important. Control of both chambers of Congress and dozens of governorships, secretaries of states, attorney generals, and many local government offices are at stake. That is why we are being bombarded with campaign ads in our mail, campaign signs on our streets, and campaign commercials on our televisions and social media devices. Now, Deacons, I don't know about you, but I will be glad when this election is over. I have had my feel of all of the negativity that is surrounding these elections. Listen, you, you cannot watch a good show on television without having to encounter multiple negative commercials. There is so much poisonous venom being spread about the candidates that it makes you feel like not voting for any of them. But that is exactly one of the tactics used to keep us from the voting booth. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm not voting because all politicians are no good? Any, any, any. <laughs> Folk who think that way are the victims of a poisoned mind. And check this out. The act of causing a person's attitude to 
to be poisoned against another did not just begin during the election process here in America. The act of spreading poisonous rhetoric to cause people to develop hostile feelings of dislike toward others happened during Bible days. Okay. In our scriptural text this morning, we are told that the Apostle Paul and Barnabas have arrived in the city of Iconium, as was their usual custom. Paul and Barnabas found and went into the Jewish synagogue. Now, Pastor Wood, why did they go to the Jewish synagogue? They went to the Jewish synagogue because they knew that the gospel message was to be given to the Jew first, then to the Greek or Gentiles. So Paul and Barnabas went to the synagogue. In other words, they went to church. And let me say right here, that there is nothing like being physically in church. Amen? Listen, as you know, I had a season of illness during this year that caused me to be physically separated from the church. But thank God for being able to watch church services virtually. But it was good. But I couldn't wait to come back and physically be in church. I don't care what you think or what you say. There is nothing like being physically present in church. The environment of praise, the atmosphere of worship makes you feel better and lifts and encourages your heart. That is why the psalmist wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into, somebody say into, the house of the Lord. And the Bible says that Paul and Barnabas went into the Jewish synagogue and began to share the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ with the Jews and Greek proselytes or converts to Judaism. And the Bible says that there were some of the Jews who refused to believe the message of the gospel given by Paul and Barnabas. They resisted Paul and
and Barnabas witness. And, and, and let me pause and say right here that the enemies of the kingdom of God will resist or try to stop your witness of the good news about Jesus Christ. What you saying, Pastor? I'm saying don't be surprised when evil and even some religious people try to slander you and hinder your testimony of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Jews that refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned, somebody say poisoned, and poisoned their minds against the brothers. <laughs> well, let me suggest to you through this text some things that people with poisoned minds will do. You still got your Bibles open? First of all, people with a poisoned mind refuse to believe the truth about Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? People with a poisoned mind refuse to believe the truth about Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, but the Jews who refused to believe. Listen, peoples whose minds have been poisoned reject the truth about Jesus Christ. Satan, who is the father of lies, tricks people into thinking that there is no truth in the gospel message. But we believers in Christ know that the devil is a liar. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. <laughs> and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. I'm so glad that Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Poison minds reject the truth of the person of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something else? A poison mind will do. Poison minded people stir up hostility between people. Let me say that again. A person or people with a poisoned mind Stir up hostility between people. Verse 2, right there in verse 2 uh, of the text says that these Jews who refuse to believe stir 
matter hostility in the synagogue. But uh, I, I, let, let me uh, let me make this practical. During our last general election, our former sitting president. Donald Trump and others stirred up hostility in people which resulted in the January 6th assault on our nation's capital and our nation's democracy. Poison minded people stir up hostility between others. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm saying that Donald Trump has a poisoned mind. <laughs> and many of his followers have sucked on the poison and now are venomous. Okay, okay. That's Nathaniel Jeffrey Wood's opinion. This is not the opinion of the entire New Providence Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> let me let me share again something else with a person with a poisoned mind will do. They don't only reject Jesus Christ as the truth and the gospel message. They don't only stir up hostility between people. But a person with a poisoned mind causes division. It's right there in text verse 4. Verse 4 says the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. People whose minds have been poisoned, their aim is to cause division. They know <laughs> that division causes uproars. Uh, I thank God for the unity of our church. Did y'all hear what I said? I thank God that we are a united people and that we don't have uproars or division here in this church. Amen. You know why? Because we watch out for poison-minded people. And we don't allow poison-minded people to flourish. Oh, Lord. Okay, let, 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 let me move on. <laughs> Lastly, poison-minded people or people who have a poison mind hurt, mistreat, and try to injure others. Let me say that again. People with a poison mind hurt, mistreat, and try to injure others. It's right there in the text. Verse 5 says, There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat 
them and stone them. Hmm. They were going to mistreat and stone or try to kill the believers in the gospel. People <laughs> whose minds have been poisoned will try to hurt you. And some whose minds are really poisoned will try to eliminate you. And check this out. Check this out. The Bible says right there in verse 5 that both Gentiles and Jews and their leaders came together to mistreat and try to stone the believers in Christ. Somebody said, well, what's unique about that? Y'all know that the Gentiles and the Jews, especially the Jews, they couldn't stand those Gentiles. They hated the Gentiles. But they found something in common. And let me tell you something. When your enemies find something in common against you, <laughs> they will join together to try to destroy you. Oh. Poison minds. Poison minds. Well, Pastor Wood, what can I do to protect my mind from being filled and overcome with the Poison of this evil world. What can I do, Pastor Wood, to protect myself, protect or guard my mind from being poisoned? All right, this, this is a practical message today. I may not holler, but I would give you some information. What, 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 Pastor Wood? Can I do to protect my mind from the poison of this evil world? First, listen, y'all get ready to write this down. First thing I suggest to you is to limit your exposure. Limit, somebody say limit your exposure. In other words, brothers and sisters, you ought to limit what you look at what you read, where you go, and who you hang around. What you look at, stop watching so much mess on television. The Bible says that the eye is the light of the body. If our eye is dark, then the rest of our body will be dark. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Some of us watch too much mess on television 
and on our social media devices that it keeps us, keeps our minds poisoned. All right, Pastor, would you meddling? <laughs> Limit your exposure to what you read. Let me tell y'all that everything that's on the internet is not true. Some of us put more confidence in our social media devices than we do the Word of God. Everything you read is not right. Just like the election was stolen. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Just hear it all the time and read about it all the time. It's almost two years later and we're still reading about it. Limit your exposure to what you read. Limit your exposure to where you go. That tells it by itself. But then the last says limit your exposure to who you hang around. If you hang around poison-minded people, then they are subject to put their poison in you. Come on now, come on now, come on now. If, I don't have to say anything else about that. What can I do, Pastor Lord, to protect my mind from being filled with the poison of this world? Fill your mind with the word of God. Fill your mind with the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. God, your word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path God your word tells me blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night God your word tells me that I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind Stayed on me. Fill your mind with the word of God. And if you fill your mind with the word of God, when the poison of this world is brought to you, your mind being filled with the word of God the word of God is like a filter. The word of God will take and take that poison and tell you, reject it. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Well, that's the message today. There's a lot of poison. A lot of rhetoric being shared and spread today. But God does not want you to be a victim. He wants you to be a victor. 
And let me just say this since the, the, the emphasis here was somewhat on voting, I pray, my brothers and sisters, that not one of you will miss your chance to place your ballot in the ballot box. I pray, I pray, I, I pray that every member of New Providence and every person who's watching, every person who is listening, will go out to vote. Now, even when you when you get there to the voting, well, you're going to have people there handing out handing out ads and little campaign ads trying to sway you who to vote for. But you know what we have as believers, which is to our advantage? Prayer. We need to pray and ask God to let us see beyond that which is in front of us and make decisions based upon our heart's desire and his will. Uh, there is one ad commercial that I approve of. And I can't even vote for the brother. But Don Davis, I haven't seen him attack anybody in his ads. But I heard him talk about my faith <laughs> is what shapes my decision making. And, I, and you know what I said? I said, if he was a Republican, it would make no difference to me. I'd vote for him. Because he is not ashamed to demonstrate and say, my faith in God shapes me. So I'm not going to be poisonous. I'm not going to be negative. I'm just going to talk about positive things. Oh, Lord. Hang around positive people. <laughs> Fill your mind with the word of God. And you will not be subject to having your mind contaminated with the poison of this evil world. Come on, stand to your feet.